Okay, hello, welcome back. Continuing to talk about wind correction angle. So now we have our wind speed, 340 at 38 knots at 3,000 feet. Now we need to figure out how it's going to incorporate this into our flight plan. Well, first thing we'll do is figure out what our true course is. And of course our true course is what we initially plot on the map. So at this particular point, we're at 145 degrees. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and put that in the calculator. 145 degrees. Now what we need to figure out is our magnetic heading and that is for variation, magnetic variation into account. So our magnetic heading will be 4 degrees subtracted 4 from 145. So we'll do 145 minus 4 degrees equals 141. And the way we know remember that is because the isogonic lines on our sectional tell us that. <clears throat> okay, 141. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to figure out our true heading. So we know that our magnetic heading is 141 degrees, but if we have a wind coming from the north pushing southward at 38 knots, that's going to affect our flight plan. So how much heading change are we going to have to put in to compensate for the wind effects? Well, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, if you're really old school, they have what's known as a wind triangle, which is basically a manual way of figuring out the um, basically the angle change, if you will. It's a trigonometry problem. So you can use the wind triangle, or you can use a manual E6B, which I will make some videos later on on how to use a manual E6B because, as far as I know, the FAA examiner will still want you to be able to use one. But I will do this on an electronic E6B because I feel that as such um, they allow you to use it and even if you go and take a FAA computer test they even allow you to take a virtual or not a virtual but an electronic E6B with you so I don't feel like I'm doing you an injustice by doing a shortcut. If anything Piloting is all about being able to use the available, all available resources. So I have an electronic E6B, therefore I will use this instead of trying to electronically or you know manually write out on the wind triangle. All right, so on our virtual E6B, if you will, you're going to have a section for wind. So I'll just go ahead and click on that, and then it'll ask you what your wind direction is, your wind speed, your true course your true airspeed. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So our wind direction is of course 340 coming out of the north. Wind speed is 38 knots. Now here it's interesting because they ask you for true course. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and put in is true heading. And it doesn't really matter if you figure out your wind correction angle first or you figure it out third. Um, it doesn't matter if you figure it out before your magnetic variation or after your magnetic variation. As long as you do all the required steps, you're going to end up with the same number. At least that's the way it should work out. So we'll just go ahead and put 141 one in there. And our true airspeed, which of course our true airspeed is something that we calculate on the E6B. Um, which is a predetermined figure pretty much for a training flight. But um, basically that is your calibrated airspeed adjusted for air pressure. But we'll go ahead and put in 115 knots, which I think is a pretty reasonable amount for a training aircraft, and we'll hit compute. And it's going to give us three figures here. It's going to give us what our actual ground speed is, 150 knots, and it'll give us a true heading, which is 134 degrees, with a wind correction angle of 6.3 degrees left, which is actually pretty quick that is outstanding you have almost a let me see that would be nearly a 35 degree 35 knot difference in speed so this is one of the reasons why it's important to fly in a um, to figure out what your wind correction angle is because it can have real world dynamic effects on your flight path so going 35 knots faster than what I planned for is something I would definitely want to know because what happened if we were going the opposite direction in fact let's do that let's go ahead and calculate for the opposite direction so let's go ahead and close that out 
I'll put that back down here. Now let's say instead of going from here to from Ellington to Galveston, let's say we're going the other way around. Let's say we're going from Galveston to Houston. So we'll go ahead and flip it and I don't know if you know this trick but you can do the plus two minus two so all you do is you add two to the first one and you subtract two from the second digit so you'll get three two five which hopefully should be right let me see if I'm correct on that it's 145 plus 180 equals 325 yeah so plus two minus two so 325 minus 4 degrees for variation let me try that again 325 minus 4 degrees for variation gives us a magnetic heading of 321 now I'll go ahead and pop up my winds my wind direction is 340 my wind speed is going to be 38 knots my true course will be 321 degrees and my true airspeed once again is 15 knots 115 we'll hit compute and we got three more figures that spits out this time instead of increasing our speed we are actually going slower uh, we have a ground speed of 78.4 true heading of 327.2 degrees and 6.2 degrees right okay so we're going slower we're gonna have to point our aircraft 6.2 degrees to the right and this is the number right here that we're concerned about that 327.2 this will actually be our compass heading and that is our final figure that is the number that we put on our compass to get us from Galveston to Houston Ellington primarily. After this is all figured out that means that once I take off from Galveston if I physically put my compass on 327 degrees I will get track this line over the ground to get to our eventual destination which is the whole point of figuring out what our winds aloft is. So hopefully that kinda helped you out a little bit and I think what I'll do is I'll just do some more winds aloft exercises to help you out with this. So I'll see you next video.